Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to start looking at some graphs of polar equations and we're going to focus here on some very basic graphs of polar equations just so we kind of get used to the idea and in subsequent videos we're going to look at some more complicated graphs and there we're going to need to use some of our knowledge of chapter 5 graphs of trig equations but before we jump too far ahead let's take a look at some of these basic polar graphs. Now when we graph a polar equation, we say that the graph of the equation r equals f of theta consists of all points r theta whose coordinates satisfy the equation. Now this is the same idea that we've been using uh, every time we've done a graph in rectangular coordinates and in fact I could write graphs of rectangular equations as the graph of the equation y equals f of x consists of all points x, y whose coordinates satisfy the equation. So in other words, what we mean by graphs remains the same. The only difference here is that we're going to be doing it in a polar coordinate system. So let's take a look at a simple example. Sketch r equals 2 and express the equation in rectangular coordinates. So first, let's take a look at our sketch. First, we need a polar axis. So here's my polar axis here. My polar axis. This is my pole or origin at this left side. Let's go ahead and mark out 1, 2. Now, r equals 2, that means I need to sketch all points that satisfy this equation. So in other words, I need to sketch out all points in the polar coordinate system that have an r of 2. Now, I have an r equals 2 here on my polar axis. I also have an r equals 2 anywhere where the point has a total distance from the origin of r. Remember when we talked about r, all that r is is the distance from the origin. So in other words, I'm looking at a circle, aren't I? I have this circle of radius 2 centered at the origin, and all of the points along this circle have an r equals 2. Any point inside the circle has an r less than 2, and any point outside the circle has an r greater than 2. So these are all of the points that satisfy this equation r equals 2. Now expressing this in rectangular coordinates, I know that if I have r equals 2, uh, let's go ahead and square both sides first. Now I could plug in the square root of x squared plus y squared for r, but we don't really like equations in rectangular coordinates that have square roots in them. So we can avoid that by just squaring both sides first. Or we could plug in the square root of x squared plus y squared for r first and then square both sides. Uh, really that's the same thing, isn't it? But we see here if I square both sides I get r squared equals 4 and then I can plug in well r squared I know is x squared plus y squared. The right side is 4 and this is exactly the equation of the graph that we have on the left there, isn't it? This is x squared plus y squared equals 4. In other words we have a circle centered at the origin, there's no shifts here, where the radius of that circle is equal to 2 or the square root of the right hand side. Okay let's take a look at another simple one. Say I want to sketch theta equals negative pi over 2 and I want to express the equation in rectangular coordinates. So again let's set up our polar axis first. Here's my polar axis going off towards the right. My origin's right here. Now the angle, negative pi over 2, that's going to be right here, isn't it? This is negative pi over 2. Now just like in the last example, I had r equals 2, so that meant all points that satisfy the equation. So here I'm looking at all points that have a theta of negative pi over 2. Well, that means that I can look at any r, can't I? So I can go down here. This is going to be any positive r value is going to be along this ray and all of the values along this ray, all the points along this ray have a theta of negative pi over 2. But I'm not just restricted to positive r's, I can look at negative r's as well. In other words we can go all the way up here and actually make this an entire line, right? These are all of my r values with a theta of negative pi over 2 and remember everything on this upper portion of this line that's just where the r is negative. So I'm facing negative pi over 2 and then I'm walking backwards with that negative r. So this is the graph, this blue up and down line. What would be my y-axis if we were in the rectangular coordinates? Now let's try to convert this over uh, to rectangular coordinates. We can look at the graph and we know right away what this is going to be, right? But let's try to do this algebraically. If I have a theta equals negative pi over 2, well I know that tangent of theta 
is equal to y over x. And I also know that tangent of negative pi over 2, plugging in the theta I have, we know that this is undefined, right? This does not exist. This is one of those values that does not exist. And when tangent does not exist, we have x equals 0. That's the only time that tangent doesn't exist here, isn't it? So it's a little bit different doing it algebraically, but we have that graph on the left to confirm our answer, don't we? This is the graph of the line x equals 0. Or in rectangular coordinates, this would be the y-axis. Now let's do another one, one more basic one. Sketch r equals 2 cosine theta. Now this one is a little bit less basic, and we're going to look at a technique here that we're going to use in the subsequent videos, but then we'll also say, well, if we had converted this into rectangular coordinates, it wouldn't have been too bad to do it that way. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to use what's called a reference graph. And what that reference graph is, is I'm going to graph in rectangular coordinates, but I'm going to label my rectangular coordinates differently. This vertical axis is not y, this is going to be my r, and this horizontal axis is going to be my theta. Now, I don't want to draw one period of 2 cosine theta. I want to draw all the way from 0 to 2 pi. All the way from 0 to 2 pi. Um, now the period here for cosine is 2 pi anyway, so that's going to work out well. Let's go ahead and mark out some of these points from when we were graphing these trig equations. And I have an amplitude of 2, don't I? So I know I'm going to need to go up to 2 and down to negative 2 for this graph of cosine. So you see what I'm doing? I've taken this, this equation, it's a polar equation, but I'm going to pretend for a second that it's not a polar equation. I'm going to pretend that it's actually a rectangular equation in the variables r and theta. So my x-axis here is actually my theta axis, my y-axis is my r-axis. And doing it this way, I can graph this cosine. We start at the top, we hit 0 at pi over 2, we bottom out at pi, we hit 0 again at 3 pi over 2, and we peak back out at theta. Now we call this a reference graph because that's exactly what it does for us. It gives us a form of reference. So I'm going to draw my polar axis, and we'll see how we use this reference graph. So here's my polar axis here. This is my pole. Let's go ahead and mark out 1, 2. We'll want to use that later. And I'm also going to go ahead and draw some little dotted lines here. These dotted lines are not actually a part of the graph. They're just for us to know at what angles we're at. Now, I use my reference graph in this way. I'm going to break it up into blocks. I see that as my theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, what's happening to my r? My r is starting at 2, and it's going to 0. So in other words, when theta equals 0, r equals 2. And on the polar graph, that looks like this. This is my theta equals 0 right here on the polar axis, and r equals 2 is going to be this point here. Now notice that it goes down from 2 slowly at first and then speeds up dramatically. So in other words, as my theta here changes, as my theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, my r, or total distance from the origin, is getting closer and closer and closer to 0, slowly at first, and then it speeds up. Okay, we see this, um, a little reference here, this last little bit, this is, we have less than halfway to go, but we make a lot of momentum towards zero there, don't we? And again, it's a little bit hard to see, but what's happening here is I'm starting at an angle zero. This ray, we can think of this ray as moving up to the ray pi over two. And what I've drawn here is my distance r. So I started at two, uh, when we went to pi over 4, this distance here is less than 2. It's not quite 1, but it is less than 2. And as my angle changes more and more, this r distance, or distance from the origin, is getting smaller and smaller. Right? It starts off pretty big, it starts off at 2, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. We see these lines I'm drawing to the origin are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And that's exactly what my r is, isn't it? Now let's go ahead and clean that up so we can see what this is. Now. From pi over 2 to pi, I'm going from 0 to negative 2. 
So here, this is pi over 2 to pi here. I'm going from pi over 2 to pi in this quadrant, and I'm going from 0 to negative 2. Now remember, in negative numbers, I'm going to be going in the opposite direction of whatever angle I'm pointing at. So you can think of it as I'm facing 3 pi over 2 to pi over 2 with positive r's. It's going to look a little something like this. Right, I'm doing the exact same thing, going from pi over 2 to pi, but my r is in the negative direction. So when I'm at pi over 4, I should be a little bit less than 1, or sorry, a little bit less than negative 1, so my distance here should be a little bit uh, less than 1, or a little bit more than 1, sorry. Okay. And for this graph, it actually it just kind of keeps repeating this. Now as I go from pi to 3 pi over 2 here, notice that from pi to 3 pi over 2, I'm going from negative 2 to 0. In other words, looking over here, because I'm in the negative, I'm actually going to be having my points up here in quadrant 1, because my r is negative. I'm going from negative 2, which is actually 2 at the angle pi, and I'm going to 0. I'm going to be retracing this side of this circle. And as I go from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, we see that I'm going from 0 to 2. So from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, my r is changing from 0 to 2. I'm just retracing this side again. So we have this circle. We have a circle, it's centered at 1, and it has radius 1. Now let's go ahead and look at our rectangular coordinate version of this and see if that matches up with what we've drawn here. r equals 2 cosine theta. Now I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. Actually, not square both sides. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by r. Right, I know I need an r over here, and I want an r squared. r squared is always better to convert than r. So multiplying both sides by r gives me r squared equals 2r cosine theta. And now I can plug in. I know that r squared is x squared plus y squared. And I know that r cosine theta is x. So I have x squared plus y squared is 2x. Let's go ahead and pull that 2x to the other side and complete the square with x. This is x squared minus 2x, and I'm going to need to add something to complete that square. Then I have plus y squared equals, and we'll leave this blank too because when I complete my square, we're going to add something over here. So remember to complete the square, I take one half of the coefficient of x, which is negative 1, and then I square it. So I'm adding a positive 1. Because I've added positive 1 on the left side of the equation, I need to add a positive 1 to the right side of the equation to make this stay equal. Now we can factor this perfect square. We get x minus 1 squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Exactly what we've drawn here, isn't it? I have a circle here now in my rectangular equation. The circle is centered at the point 1, 0, and it has a radius of 1. Now we're going to get very familiar with this idea of a reference graph. It's very important to note that this reference graph here is not the graph of the polar equation. We're graphing the polar equation as if it was rectangular just so that we can look at it as a comparative with what is my r value for any particular value of theta. It's kind of like just a table we look at to cross-reference where we should be when we're drawing this polar graph. Now we're getting some more complicated examples in the next few videos, so we'll see you there.